Okay, this is a demonstration of the uh, <coughs> dielectric breakdown of air. Now what this is, is um, dielectric materials can only withstand electric fields that reach up to a certain point, and then they break down. And this is a discussion of that, of that breakdown. Today we're going to demonstrate the dielectric strength of air. This is important because lightning means that you're breaking down the air and stripping the electrons from the atoms in the air. And when you strip an electron off of an oxygen or a nitrogen atom, then that electron can conduct electricity just like a metal can. And that's how lightning is, um, is formed, by the uh, stripping of electrons off of the atoms and then the electrons um, uh, conduct the electricity between the clouds and the earth. The dielectric strength, so-called, of air is three million volts per meter. So this is a meter stick, and if we have a voltage difference of three million volts across this meter, then we can cause dielectric breakdown of the air, we can strip the electrons off the atoms, and get uh, an electrically conducting path through the air. Uh, that's a lot of voltage, three million volts. With this Van de Graaff generator, I can't quite get that. Later on when we do the Tesla coils, we will. But I can get um, an arc across a 10 centimeter distance. And so if you divide 3 million volts per meter, you divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10, then 3 million divided by 10 is 300,000 volts, and 1 meter divided by 10 is 10 centimeters. So we will be able to get an arc over a distance of about 10 centimeters. Um, so I'll show it to you for a, a small arc of maybe 1 centimeter and then ba basically up to 10, 10 centimeters. So we'll be talking about 300,000 volts. Um, this ball, just so that you get a, an idea of, of the scale, this ball is about 10 centimeters in size. So when we turn the lights out, then you'll be able to get an idea about how far the distances are. So let's uh, turn the lights out and give it a shot. Okay, so here's about a centimeter distance it was about 10 centimeters so these so these uh, these arcs between the two spheres, uh, like we said, is an expression of dielectric breakdown between the two spheres. And um, actually what we're getting between them is a plasma. It's the fourth state of matter. Um, solid, liquid, gas, and then plasma is an, is an ionized gas. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, conceptual example, an empty capacitor is connected to a battery and charged up. <clears throat> so here we go, here's the, here's the capacitor that's been charged up, it's got a charge Q on it. The capacitor is then disconnected from the battery and a slab of dielectric material is inserted between the plates. So here's my slab that we've inserted. Does the voltage across the pl plates increase, remain the same, or decrease? So the, the real issue here is to ask what's staying the same? between here and here. And, and the answer is that the charge has to remain the same. Why? 
we've disconnected the capacitor from the battery. There's no place for the charge to go. It's stuck on this plate. This negative charge is stuck on that plate. The positive charge is stuck on this plate. And so if we want to look at the capacitance then, in the case of A, it's uh, kappa epsilon naught A over D. This A, sorry for the confusion here, A refers to configuration A, not the area. And if there's nothing inserted between the plates, then this capacitance, then the dielectric constant kappa is going to be 1. So this is just epsilon naught A over D. All right, well, what about the situation uh, with, with situation B? We've got a dielectric constant K that we have inserted. So the capacitance at B is going to be kappa epsilon naught A over D. And what we're asking about now is what happens to the voltage across the plates. We now have the two capacitances, capacitance with A and a capacitance with B, and how are they related to, with each other? And the answer is, well, this part right here, epsilon naught A over D, is just the capacitance at A in, in configuration A with no dielectric inserted. So C sub B is kappa times C sub A. But the capacitance definition is what over what? Charge divided by potential difference. So let's plug in what we know about these two. Um, capacitance at B will be the charge for con uh, situation B divided by the voltage in situation B equals kappa times the capacitance in situation A with no dielectric inside, which is kappa times Q over the voltage difference at A. I put the same Q in A and B. Why is that? Because the Q is the same. There's no place for the charge to go. It has to stay. Well, the charges then cancel each other. You can divide through by the, by the charges. You can uh, multiply both sides by VA and VB. So if I multiply this side by VA, VB, and multiply this side by VA, VB, then on this side, the VAs cancel. And on this side, the VBs cancel. And VA, therefore, is kappa times VB. Kappa is a dielectric constant. It's a number that is greater than 1, always greater than 1. So if you multiply VB by a number that's greater than 1, you're going to get a number that's uh, VA is going to be bigger than VB. So does the voltage across the plates increase, remain the same, or decrease? Well, the final situation is, well, this is the initial is greater than the final. So it's actually going to decrease. The final will be less than the, than the initial voltage. Charges will be the same. Um, another quick example. This is uh, pertinent to your computer keyboards. Each key on a uh, computer keyboard is mounted on one end of a plunger. So that's this uh, plunger here with the other end attached to a movable metal plate. And this is uh, 
And that's this guy here. The movable plate is a f and a fixed plate form a capacitor whose capacitance increases when the key is depressed, is pressed. The five millimeter, so this is initially five millimeter separation between here and here, reduces to 0.15 millimeters when you press the key. And it's given, they give us the plate area and the dielectric constant. And um, the question is the change in the capacitance detected by the computer. So the computer, the, the reason that, that the computer knows that you've, um, you've uh, touched a key is that there's a change in capacitance. We can work it out, it's very easy. Um, the dielectric constant is 3.5. Epsilon naught is 1 over 4 pi k, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And, um, and then the uh, cross-sectional area is given. This is the initial distance between the plates, and this is the final. The only thing that's different between these two calculations is the distance between the two plates. And so that gives two different capacitances with the difference between them being 19 times 10 to the minus 12 farads. So to avoid um, writing 10 to the minus 12 a lot in this chapter, we'll use PICO. So in this case, delta C is 19.0 pico farads. And what's a pico? A pico is 10 to the minus 12. We'll also use um, Uh, I think we had a concept in first semester where you learned, some of you that took it from me would have learned some of these prefixes, um, but if you, you don't remember them or you didn't have it from me, this is what, this is what a pico is, it's 10 to the minus 12. What's a nano? We'll use that one in this chapter also. 10 to the minus 9. What's a micro? We've already used that in this chapter. Ten to the minus six. So and uh, a milla, it's the other one. Ten to the minus three. Those are the main ones that we'll use in this um, in this chapter. Uh, defibrillators are. Uh, one very important example of how capacitors are used, you have these two paddles that um, you, you connect to the two plates of a capacitor that's been charged and ha carries a, a significant amount of charge. You discharge that capacitor through those uh, paddles to create a jolt of electricity in order to, to hopefully restart the heart. Um, another place these uh, principles are used are in, in cells. There's a, a cell membrane that has a potential difference across it. Positive uh, charges on one side, negative charges on the other side, and then a sodium channel can open up to help to equalize that, um, that potential difference across that. So essentially this cell membrane is acting like a capacitor with positive charge on one side negative on the other side. With an action potential caused by the rush of those po positive sodium ions into the cell and the, re the return of the cell to its uh, resting potential. So you get a, a membrane potential that increases, then it decreases, then eventually comes back to its, its normal, um, normal potential of minus 70 millivolts, milli being 10 to the minus 3, excellent, good for you. Uh, state the energy stored in a capacitor. Just a simple statement, it's 1 half CV squared. I don't know how to help you learn that except just to memorize it. Um, the looks like 1 half MV squared, you can think about it that way, the kinetic energy where M is replaced by C, however you want to think about it. But that's the energy stored in a capacitor. 
That can be rewritten in a lot of different ways using the fact that C is Q, the charge on the capacitor, divided by the potential difference across the capacitor. Here V is a potential difference. In volts, C is the capacitance. In farads, excellent. And um, one half is one half. Um, this actually, you can rewrite this energy as an energy density. And so you can think about the like I said before, you can think about this energy being stored in the charge on the capacitor plates, or you can think about it being stored in the electric fields. And we'll increasingly, as we move through the semester, think about it more in terms of it, the energy being stored in the electric fields. Uh, parallel plate capacitor connected to a battery maintains a constant potential difference across the plates. Initially, the space between the plates contains only air. So this is actually similar to the problem that we did before. We have a um, capacitor plus Q on one plate, minus Q on the other plate. Um, so then a Teflon sheet is, enter is inserted with a dielectric constant of 2.1, but not touching the plates. How does the stored energy of the capacitor change as a result of inserting the Teflon sheet. Okay, so the potential difference is going to stay the same, but the charge may, may well, the, the battery ensures that the potential difference has to stay the same. So if you connect this capacitor across a battery, a 12 volt battery, then the, the voltage across it before and after you insert this plate is still gonna be 12 volts. Um, the charge may, may change. The, the uh, energy stored is 1 half C V squared, concept we just talked about. The potential difference across it is going to be the same. Well, what about the capacitance when we add this um, dielectric inside of it? You say, well, the capacitance is going to go up because as you insert a dielectric inside of a capacitor, you will increase its capacitance. And therefore, since this capacitance goes up, the energy must also go up. The energy stored in that capacitor has to go up. Uh, the demonstration of capacitor charge. This is a little uh, ping pong ball placed between the two plates. This is a capacitor. A capacitor has two parallel plates. One charged uh, to positive charge and the other charged to a negative charge. And there's an electric field and a, vo a voltage between them, an electric field between them. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate how um, the capacitor has opposite charge on, on, on the different plates by putting this ping pong ball suspended by a, a thread between them. And when I energize the capacitor, the ping pong ball will be attracted to one side and then acquire the charge on that side. So if I'm on, if it's hitting this, let's just say this plate is positive and this plate is negative, when it hits this positive plate, some of that positive plate will bleed over onto the ping pong ball, making it positive. And it will be repelled by this positive plate. Then it'll head over to the negative plate, touch the negative plate, acquire a negative charge, and be repelled by the negative plate, then back to the positive plate again. You can even see some little sparks in there. As the ping pong ball approaches the plate, there's dielectric breakdown. The air gets uh, ionized uh, before the ping pong ball actually reaches the plate 
and there's charge transfer before they even touch.